So in the previous video, we created this very simple, simple pendulum simulation in MATLAB. Right, and this is a completely passive simulation. In other words, there is no uh, torque uh, in addition to um, uh, the gravitational torque about the uh, pivot. Um, and and uh, how do we uh, include, say, things like torque or imposed motion or other external forces on a system like this? So let's look at that. So if you wanted to apply a torque at the revolute joint, of course, you double click the revolute joint and then look under actuation. And you can say provided by input and motion is automatically computed. Okay. Um, and then you apply. So before I say apply, let me just uh, direct you your attention to uh, these two sort of uh, set of options. So it's possible to provide torque by some input, which is what we're going to do now. And then of course, as a consequence of the torque, there's going to be some motion and that motion is computed well by uh, Simscape by essentially integrating the dynamics, right? So alternatively, you can prescribe motion by input and then the torque could be automatically computed. So you can ask the question, given some motion of this simple pendulum, what is uh, the torque that produces that motion? Um, so, so you can either give torque and then ask for the motion, or you can give the motion and then ask for the torque. Uh, both are possible. Uh, asking for uh, motion given torque is just normal dynamics. Uh, asking for the torque given the motion is sometimes called inverse dynamics. It's called inverse dynamics because you're given motion and, and uh, you're asked for the torque or more generally forces and torques in other situations. And inverse dynamics is a term that's commonly used in robotics, biomechanics, and a bunch of other fields. Um, but so that would be called inverse dynamics. What is the torque that can produce a particular motion or something like that? Okay, so we're going to actually do the opposite, which is forward dynamics, provide the input and then automatically compute it. Okay. And then let me move this so that you guys can see this part of the screen. I'm going to press apply. Um, at this point, there's a base and a follower. There are just these two ports in this revolute joint. As soon as I click apply, there's going to appear a third port apply. Okay, so there just appeared this third port, which is basically your torque input port. And then you can go OK. And then we can input the torque. Um, so I'm going to uh, do the following thing. Um, so Sim Mechanics uh, or, or Simscape Multibody can interact with um, Simulink modules as well. So anything that Simulink has access to, you can uh, use in Simscape Multibody. So we click on this thing called the library browser, which has access to all the blocks uh, that that MATLAB has access to, as lots of them. Um, these are the Simscape ones that we are using, specifically the Simscape multi-body ones. This is just a different arrangement of, of uh, the other GUI that we saw. In any case, we can also uh, use Simulink uh, blocks, and Simulink has a variety of sources, for instance, um, a clock signal, a ramp signal, band limited white noise, um, random number, blah, 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 all kinds of signals, right? So let's actually just uh, try to uh, apply a constant torque, right? So let's make this constant, I don't know, uh, 200 or something, apply, okay? And then make this an input to this thing. But then it doesn't want, want to connect this constant number to this torque. OK, 
okay doesn't want to connect it and the reason is because uh, i think sim, uh, sim mechanics and simulink uh, and simscape tries to distinguish between real numbers and physical signals physical signals such as torque angle and so on so so we need something that converts these real numbers to what they call physical signals so if you go on to simscape utilities there is this thing called simulink to ps converter simulink to physical signal converter so let's pull that in here and move this a little bit and connect this output of this to this and then the output of this to this now it's happy it accepts the connection save now we are able to do a simulation oops and let's run so notice now that it's oscillating but it's not oscillating about downward vertical it's oscillating about sort of onto one side and that's because of this additional torque so there's a torque there's a 200 newton meter torque that is constant acting in this direction so it sort of shifted the equilibrium position previously the equilibrium about which it was oscillating was downward vertical now it's oscillating about some angle um, okay so that's it's as simple as that and then if you wanted some sinusoidal or cosinusoidal or more complicated time uh, function uh, function of time here you can just use other simulink blocks or you can even write a MATLAB function to uh, provide a time varying input to um, this uh, talk okay so that's it um, what if you wanted to make a plot of the angle here is an animation but what if you wanted to make a plot Okay, so Simulink or Sim Mechanics or Simscape allows for you to do that as well. Um, so to do that, you have to double click on the revolute joint. And then, uh, so what do we want to plot? Um, let's say we want to plot the position. When, we, when, when Simscape says position in the context of a revolute joint, it's the angle that the revolute joint uh, enables the angular displacement that the uh, revolute joint enables so it's the position basically that outputs the angle um, and then as soon as I as I just check that and then I'm going to press apply and then you will notice that a new output port is going to appear here so watch here as I press apply just a new port appeared and then okay save uh, so we need some way of um, displaying the output from this output port the angle um, and the simulink simulink has this thing called a scope so this is under simulink and let's scroll down sorry not sources but sinks sources are uh, inputs sinks are basically outputs um, and uh, you can put a scope here Scope, uh, I suppose, is short for oscilloscope. Um, and this, we can say theta of phi or something like that here if we want. And just output that. Um, again, uh, this output does not want to uh, connect with the scope. Uh, the issue is the same conversion between what's a physical signal and scope, which uh, apparently plots um, just I guess um, a real number time series um, so we can go back to simscape multi-body or simscape utilities and then go physical uh, signal to simulink converter um, and And then save again and uh, we can have this 
the outputting, the displaying the graph as I press play. And okay, so that's the um, plot of the um, simulation.